Competitive bass fishing has been around for over 55 years. The co-angler events transform from someone just looking to go fish with a professional into a highly competitive group of anglers with a passion for sport fishing. Most of the co-anglers have boats and compete regularly in bass fishing tournaments. A select few have dreams of taking the big stage one day. These co-anglers face different challenges than the boater. Most of what happens on the water is out of their control. This is a mental game, a game of adaptation and focus. It takes a special kind of person to compete at the highest level. It takes a special kind of person to thrive in the back of the boat. This is the life of a co-angler, and this is their story. Uh, I mean, you start fishing. I first started fishing when I was a kid, but I moved to Florida in 2017 and um, got into it with uh, bass fishing by just going out on Toho one day with a John boat, and I caught a 10 and a half pound bass. And within three months, I had a bass boat and was fishing competitively and figured out that you can catch a bunch of fish and have a little bit of social fun with it too. you have to be able to adapt to a lot of different things that are unique to or that are different from being a boater. From a boater you're in control and you can fish kind of off of instincts and um, even though you can do that somewhat from the back of the boat you're it's kind of out of play. Uh, fish a lot of team tournaments and you kind of feed off of each other through instincts and what's next and whatnot and you really lose that from being a co-angler um, in, in a tournament like this, for sure. A guy named Jared Albright has proclaimed the king of Toho, so I would be the junior king, I guess, but... Um, no, I definitely wouldn't hand me his crown. I might get to, get to touch it, though, and, and see it. I've heard I have a nickname too, but depends on who you ask. <laughs> I put in the work, I'll say that. There's not very many people that fish Toho more than me. Uh, I've been fishing competitively six years. Um, yeah, six years. I fished my first bass tournament as a co-angler five years ago. I did that for one season and uh, had a great season. I finished top 25 in the nation and they guaranteed me a boater spot the following year. And the first tournament was on Toho, so I couldn't say no. I've been on the front of the boat for the last four years. This is my first time co-angling in five. So I try to think back to all the co-anglers that I had, good, bad, or indifferent, the things that they've done. And I want to be respectful to my boater in that regard. And I guess the number one thing to remember as a co-angler is the guys that are boaters are there because they want to take this to the next level. 
they've put in the time, they've put in the resources, they've taken time away with their families. Financially, it's a huge commitment. I know that because I've done it. I've gone from co-angling to the boater side. So just be respectful of that and uh, you'll have a good time. completely different from one another and you know through my time I've spent a lot of time on Toho and um, this week I've spent a lot of time on the other chains because I feel like I know Toho and how to adapt to it so I just hope that I can um, whatever boater I draw or boaters um, if he chooses one of the other three legs that are in the chain that I can adapt and understand what's what's there but if it's a boater that sticks on Toho then um, I feel, I feel pretty, pretty good about putting some, some fish in the, in the boat for sure. I mean, honestly, I haven't put in any thought into what the winning weight's going to be on the co-angler side. Um, even though I'm fishing as a co-angler, look, the goal is, is I'm going out and I'm fishing for the three biggest bites of the day. I need three bites. If they're the right bites, I will win. There's some things changing on the lake right now as we speak, and I think the guys that figure it out going into tomorrow are going to have some good bags. And I think that winning weight's probably gonna be 42, potentially even bigger. Um, it's gonna get exciting. You know, I'm just looking for a consistent, you know, catch three or four pounders, put three of them in a boat, and if I can get 10 to 12 pounds in a boat each day, then, you know, you're just looking for that uh, kicker. So there's your new co-angler leader, Jared Albright out of Kissimmee, Florida, with 13 pounds, four ounces. I'm at the Bassmaster Southern Open on Toho, Chuck Pippen. I'm here with my buddy Jared Albright, who just weighed in big bag so far today for the co-angler side. What'd yeah. you catch him on? <laughs> the Dirty Albright, Pippinator, it's baby. The Pippinator, my eight inch trick worm. We got a new color coming out. We named it after him because he's the one that requested it. What was your big one today? Uh, 7 Eleven. I'm leading big bass on boater and co angler side. Not that it matters. But, right. You know. it, does matter. it does matter. It does matter. It does matter. It does. We got high water, low water, not moving water. It was super cold last week and now it's 80 degrees and the water, the fishes don't know what to do. And sometimes here you just gotta drag that big worm. You just gotta drag that big worm, man. Just Good luck. slow it down. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. 13.5 would put him in the lead. Three fish, 13 pounds, eight ounces, new non-boater leader. Nice job, new leader, 13.8. It was pretty cool because I got into the basin and I didn't know what he had and I knew I had a decent bag and so I called him and I said, you still here? And he said, yeah, why? And I said, stick around. And he goes, oh yeah? I said, yeah. So I asked him what he had and he said 13.4 and I said, well, I'm either gonna be above you or behind you, but um, it'll be pretty cool. So he had big bass obviously and uh, made a big deal about at the end of the day being one and two, which is super cool. That's amazing. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. The biggest name person that I've ever been in a boat with, and I was at that point just wanting to soak it in no matter how that second day was gonna play out. I wanted to leave that day with being able to tell a story about, hey, I've, I've, I fished with Bradley Hallman. You know, I talked to him the night before, one thing led, led to another, and he's like, look, I'll give you the first couple hours of the day. If you have anything, I think I, took pictures of like six different areas. I felt pretty confidently that we could go at any time during the first two hours of the day and at least catch a limit, which was my goal. Two fish, excuse me, one pound, 10 ounces, seven, two. That means Ron Shakespeare is gonna be taking on the trophy of the Semi Channel Lake as the co-angler, $24,000. 
adjusting. Uh, we did a lot of that this week. We put 10, 12 hours on the water each day and came into it just looking to get a few bites and fortunate to get them. I think part of the thing that happened this week was that Jared and I had a bait from Chuck Pippen Fishing called the Dirty Albright. Um, that certainly came into play. Uh, it's a bait that a lot of these fish out in this chain haven't seen. So you just try to be respectful for, for them.